Hi, this is Asin. You are now watching Asin SL TV. Today, I would like to share how to create countdown timer on user form. In this video, I'm going to create two user forms. One is for the user to set the duration, and the other is to run as the timer. Let's go to the developer tab and click on Visual Basic. Insert the first user form and design it. Go to the properties of user form 1. Change the caption if needed. Next, let's insert a combo box for the user to set the duration. Insert at the desired place. Under the properties of combo box 1, scroll and look for text type to zeros. Next, scroll up and look for font. Change to the desired style. Select and click on OK. Lastly, scroll up again and look for Author size. Change to true, then change back to false. And we should now insert a label to describe the measure. Insert at the desired place. Since this is for hour, under the properties of label 1, change the caption to hour. Also, change the font and the font style. Select the desired style and click on OK. If you want the press on the combo box and the label lie on the same level, we can adjust accordingly. However, if you feel to do so, don't worry. Let's go to the properties of Labor 1, scroll and look for the top precision. Change accordingly until we have desired precision. Next, adjust the size of the labor if needed. Now, press the control key on the keyboard and click on the control box. In order for us to select both controls, click and drag, copy and place at the desired place. Click on any editable area of the user form. Click on the second labor, change the caption. This time, we should change to minute. Repeat the same step for second. Resize the user form if needed. And lastly, is to insert a command button on this user form. Insert at the desired place. Change the back color, the caption, the font, select the desired style and click on OK. Again, resize the user form if needed. And we can now proceed to the coding part. Double click on any editable area of this user form. Instead of using the procedure, click, let's change to activate. Delete the unwanted procedure. In the activate procedure, let's type the code. To add number to the combo box in order for the user to select, we could use the full loop. Let's create a dummy for us to run through each control. The dummy can be any letter or any word as long as it's not received. And we should tell where is the control located. We could type the name user form 1, but since this user form is the user form that we are looking for, which means that we can type me followed by dot controls since we are looking for the controls. But then an issue we might be facing. Thing. Let's back to the user form. Notice that we have more than one type of controls on this user form, namely the combo box, the label, as well as the command button. Therefore, we should use a condition to run only for the combo box. Use the if condition and use type name to check for the desired control. The variable that is CP, close bracket, and we should set equal to combo box. The syntax is very important. Make sure we type correctly and it must be in terms of string so we need quotation marks if this is the case then we can insert the number however another issue arises let's back to the user form we should bear in mind that the maximum number of hour is different from minutes and seconds since for hour we can take up to 24 but 59 for minutes and second to make the coding part easier let's click on the first combo box under the properties of combo box one i'm going to change the name to hour one and now back to the coding Part, create another condition and we should check only the first letter of the particular combo box. Use the dot name property to check the name and we should take only the first character. So we have comma followed by one close bracket and we should set equal to H since we name as over one which means that the first letter should be H. If this is the case then we should have a maximum number of 24 otherwise we should set the number be equal to 59. Start with if of course we need to end with E, and we can now add the numbers to the combo box. I'm going to start with the with function so that we don't have to call the combo box for a couple of times. Use the for loop with a variable i, start from number 1 and set up to the maximum number. Use dot add item property to add the numbers which we run by using the variable i. If let's say we want the number to be always in two digits, we should format this number by using the format function bracket 
it, move to the end, make a comma, and type the desired format in terms of string. So we need quotation marks. If let's say when i is a single digit number, we should assign a zero in front of it, followed by hashtag to indicate any number. And with quotation mark and close bracket, added the first number, we should proceed to the next. So we have next i. Start with with. Of course, we need to end with we. Start with if and with if. Finish the first control. Proceed to the next. And the coding part for the combo box is done. Let's double click on the user form and run it. Click on the combo box to check the numbers. We have 24 for hours, 59 for minutes, and so for seconds. Everything correct. And we can now proceed to the second user form. Before we insert and design the second user form, let's check an important thing so that everything will be run smoothly. Under the properties of user form 1, scroll and look for show model. Change to false. And we can now insert and design the second user form. Change the caption if needed. Also, scroll and look for show model. Change to false as well. Now, let's design. Firstly, we need a label. Insert at the desired place. Under the properties of label 1, change to the desired color. We can use the palette white. Change the caption with the desired time format. Scroll and look for font. Change to the desired style. Select and click on OK. Next, scroll and look for special effect. Instead of using flat, change to sunken. Lastly, scroll up and look for order size. Change to through, then change back to false. Change the size of the user form and insert to command button. Insert at the desired place. Under the properties of command button 1, change the back color to palette green. Change the caption to start. Scroll and change the font style. Select and click on OK. Next, insert another command button. And this button is going to be used for the user to decide whether to stop the timer. Under the properties of command button 2, we could also change the color, the caption, the font, select the desired style and click on OK, as well as the font color, that is the font color. I'm going to use palette white. And now let's insert another label to run as HP bar. Insert at the desired place. Under the properties of label 2, delete the caption, change the back color to palette white. Scroll and look for special effect. Change to sunken. Next, insert another label. Cover the previous label. Also, under the properties of label 3, change the back color to the desired color. I'm going to use palette green. Also, delete the caption. Scroll and look for special effect. This time, we should change to rise. Adjust the size of the user form and we can now move to the coding part. Firstly, is to transfer the time set by the user from the first user form to the second user form. So we have to back to the first user form. Double click on the set button. Before transferring numbers, we should first call the second user form. Since this command button 1 is on the first user form, but we want to call the second user form. So we cannot use me for this time, but we have to write the name of the user form. So we type user form 2.show in order for us to call it. Next is to transfer the number to the user form to dot label 1. We should first call the other, which is recorded on the first combo box of user form 1. So we can use me for this case. Since this command button is placed on the first user form, so we can use me. Followed by dot first combo box that I name our 1. Use emphasis to connect the format and the rest of the numbers. We need colon. Remember to type together with the quotation marks. Use emphasis again to connect next number. We have me dot combo box 2. Again, emphasis followed by quotation colon quotation. And lastly, emphasis followed by the last combo box that is me dot combo box 3. Once all the numbers are transferred to the second user form, we can now close the first user form. Before moving to the second user form, I'm going to add another statement here. Since the timer is just called, therefore the stop button is meaningless at the moment. So I'm going to make it invisible. So we have user form 2 dot the command button to dot visible and we set equal to false and now let's proceed to the second user form and right click double click on the start button and i'm going to use the caption on this button as an indicator to determine whether we should start resume or even pause so we need condition e let's call the caption since this command button is on second user form and we wish to call second user form so we use me 
dot, comma button 1. Call the caption to run as indicator. If it is start, which means that we could run the timer. I'm going to introduce a dummy with boolean response to run the timer. Let's set equal to true. We will run it only when it is true. And we can now write the code to change the caption and color of this command button. Let's copy and paste it here. Once the user click on start, which means that the user has the right to instruct pause. So let's change to pause. And I'm going to change the back color as well as the font color. So let's paste. Instead of using caption, let's use dot back color. And this time, I'm going to change to VB red. Next, change the font color. That is the full color. I'm going to set equal to VB white. Since it is just started, which means that the stop button is useless. So I'm going to set the visibility of the second button be equal to false. If not start, then we have pause. To make a pause, we have to set A be equal to false. Let's copy the code and paste it here. Let's amend accordingly. After pause, instead of start again, we can have resume. Since we have another indicator here, so we should add this to the first condition. Join using the all operator. Now let's change the colors. Change the back color back to green, while the full color back to black. Besides, instead of resume, the user is allowed to stop, which means that we should make the second command button be visible set to true. Start with if, of course we need to end with if. And we can now update the timer by using do loop. We will run only while A is true. Besides checking on A, we should also check the time left. If the time is 0 seconds left, which means that we should stop the process. Use the condition if to check the time on labor 1. If it is equal to 0 seconds left, type the time with the format exactly the same when we design the timer. Then I will first need a bit sound before a message box telling the user the time is up. When the time is up, nothing to do, simply end the process. If not 0 seconds left, then we should update the time. To ensure the timer run correctly, we should use application.fade and we should wait starting from now plus 1 second. The format for 1 second start with hashtag followed by 12 colon 00 colon 01 followed by am and hashtag close bracket press enter. To ensure the user either click on any command buttons when the timer is running, we need a code call do events. Then we can update time on the labor one by using the date and function bracket interval as string since we need seconds so use the letter s and must be in terms of string so we need quotation marks comma number as double since this is countdown timer so we should minus one for every second comma date that is the original time simply the time on the labor one close bracket and press enter start with if of course we need to end with e since we are going to run this timer together with a hash p bar that is labor three so we need another two dummies to update the width. Introduce the two dummies before do loop. Firstly, I'm going to use B to record and convert the total time allocated. Use the left function to record over. Always refer to the first labor. We have me dot labor one and we should take only two digits. To convert after to second, we should times 3600 plus the middle digits that is for minute. Use the mid function to record the digit on me dot labor one and this time we should check the position. We should start from 1, 2, 3, 4, the fourth character. So we start from 4 and we take only 2 digits. To convert minute to second, we time 60. And lastly, plus the second by using the right function bracket. Also on me dot labor 1 and we take only 2 digits. Next is to record the width of the hash p bar that is labor 3 by using another dummy. So we have the dummy be set equal to me dot labor 3 and we should record the width. Besides these two dummies, we should always bear in mind that the width of this hash p bar should also be affected by the time passed. So we need another dummy. Right after updating the time, we should record the time passed. Let it be M and we update every one second. Now move to the end and update the width. So we have me dot labor tree dot width and the width is changed based on the proportion of the duration left. 
take the width that is the variable and times proportion of time left. So we have the time allocated B minus the time passed and close bracket and divided by the time allocated to obtain the proportion and now press enter. Besides, if you wish to change the color, let's say when the time is less than or equal to 10 seconds left, we want to change to red color, which means that we need another condition insert before updating the width. Use if function if me dot neighbor one when the time is less than equal to 10 seconds, then we can change the color of the HP bar that is labor 3 to red. Use VB red. Otherwise, it should remain as green. Start with if. Of course, we need to end with E. Finish the first round. Proceed to the next. So we have loop. And the coding part for the first command button is now done. Let's back to the second user form and double click on the stop button. To stop, nothing to do. Simply end everything. Before we check the timer, let's consider a very important issue. As the name of this procedure, command button one click which means that Excel will run all over again when the command button is clicked in order to ensure that Excel did not treat the dummy A as different dummy whenever the button is clicked we should set the dummy as public so we type public A as boolean and we can now back to the spreadsheet and set a command button to allow the user to set time without going to Visual Basic click on the properties window choose the back color the caption the font select the design style and click on OK. Close the window and off the design mode. And we should now be able to set duration by using this command button. Let's pick a time for example 15 seconds set and we should have start button visible but the second button invisible. When we click on start the time is running and the HP pile as well. Pause everything stop. Once it is paused the user can choose to resume or even stop. Of course the user can reset the duration when they click on stop and they can start all over again and the time will still be running correctly. And notice that the hash bar turned to red when the time left less than or equal to 10 seconds as we can see here. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this. See you.